Many of the word problems in algebra involves ratio and proportion. So for today, we're going to learn how to solve ratio and proportion in a word problem and how to set up equations in a word problem that uses ratio and proportion. And first, you need to learn how to write the correct ordering of your ratio and proportion based off the problem. So in this example, suppose there are 35 people in a room, 15 of whom are men, what is the ratio of women to men? So in this given word problem, the number of people that's given is 35, and the number of men is equal to 15. The number of women in this word problem is not given, but we know that women is basically 20 if there are 15 men out of the 35 people in the room. So now that we know the total number of people, number of men, and number of women, we'll be able to answer the question here, which is to write the ratio of women to men. And to write the ratio of women to men, there are three ways on how you can write it out. The ratio of women to men is simply 20 is to 15, or 20 over 15, or 20 to 15. So these three notations are just different ways on how you write ratio in algebra. But all of them are just the same thing. You just need to be exposed on how it's written so when you see it in a word problem or in a mathematical question, you should know that they are talking about ratio for this particular notation. Now, we have, you have to remember that the order is very important in ratio and proportion. For this example, we are being asked to find the ratio of women to men. That's why I wrote 20 is to 15. Now, if the question is to write the ratio of men to women, it's no longer going to be 20 is to 15. You need to switch it into 15 is to 20. So it's really dependent on how the question is being asked and on how you write your ratio because this will help you understand and find the value of, uh, let's say, an x in a given problem that involves ratio and proportion. So once again, the order Order is very important in ratio and proportion. Now here are several operations that you need to learn on how to solve problems involving ratio and proportion. I have example number one which is x over 2 equal to 15 over 3 which can represent ratio in a given problem. x is to 2 equal to 15, 15 is to 3. Now, in solving for the value of x given a ratio or a fraction, you can use cross multiplication to solve for the value of x. Now, what is cross multiplication? Cross multiplication is basically multiplying your denominator to the numerator of your other fraction and vice versa. So, cross multiply. Now, the only time that you can use cross multiplication is when you have a fraction equal to another fraction. You cannot use cross multiplication if this is not an equal sign because there's a lot of students who are cross multiplying even if the operation is plus, minus, times, or division. You don't cross multiply unless it's equal sign in between the two fractions. And that's what we're going to learn or work out in this problem so we can solve for x. So if I have x over 2 equal to 15 over 3, by cross multiplication, 3 times x is 3x, and 2 times 15 will give me 30. So I cross multiply. Now I have to have x by itself. So to get rid of the number by x, we know that we all, all only have to divide both sides by 3. So we could get 3 by itself, I mean x by itself. So this cancel out. So x is equal to 10. So that's how we use cross multiplication in solving equation which involves ratio. Now, for number 2, I have 6 over 2 equal to x over 3. This is an example of a ratio equal to another fraction because you have an equal sign in the middle. So, to solve for x, excuse me, you need to cross multiply. So, notice that I changed my x in my second problem, but I'm still using the same method, which is cross multiplication, and my answer will still be... Well, it's not going to be the same, but the process will still be the same. So cross multiply 6 over 2 
equal to x over 3, so 3 times 6 is 18, 2 times x is 2x, have x by itself, so x is equal to 9. So for example number 3, if I have 5 over 2 is to 15 over x, to solve for x, I will need to cross multiply. So x is now the denominator of my second fraction. By cross multiplication, I have x times 5, which is 5x, and 2 times 15, which is 30. Now to have x by itself, divide both sides by 5. So this cancel out. So you have 30 divided by 5, which gives you 6. So x is equal to 6. So once again, before we proceed to our word problem, you can cross multiply only if you have a fraction equal to a fraction. And when you're cross multiplying, it's always bottom multiply to top, multiply, I mean bottom multiply to top. And you can't just cross multiply any of the terms, whichever you like. You have to make sure that you're using the same process. Now, let's solve our first word problem that uses the cross multiplication method in answering or solving for the value of x. So in this word problem, there are two cats and three dogs in the store. Suppose there are 12 cats for sale, how many dogs are there in the store? So the first step in this word problem is to write your proportion. So since I read cats, First, in this word problem, my proportion will be cats is two dogs, so cats over dogs. And in this proportion, there are two cats for every three dogs. So I have cats is two dogs equal to two is to three. Now, the word problem is asking us to find the total number of dogs given that there are 12 cats in the store. So there are 12 cats in the store. How many dogs will there be by using this proportion and that will be step number two writing our equation so in our ratio cats is to dogs which is two is to three proportion for every two cats there are three dogs in this store right here so i have two over three equal to the total number of cats is given which is 12 i only need to find the number of dogs that's in that store so now i have a ratio now all i need to do is to solve for the value of x so i can solve the word problem so that will be my third step i'm going to solve for x by cross multiplication so here i'm going to multiply x to 2 which gives me 2x and 3 to 12 which gives me 36 i need to have x by itself so 2 divided by 2 36 divided by 2, this cancels out, and x is equal to 18. So therefore, if there are 12 cats in this store, in total, there's 18 dogs here based on our ratio. Now, as I've mentioned, order is very important in solving proportion or word problems involving proportions. So cats is to dogs, cats is to dogs, and cats, or the total number of cats, is to dogs. So you need to make sure that you are consistently using the right ratio when you're solving for x. Now what if instead of using cats is to dogs, I interchange it and I wrote, I wrote dogs is to cats. Will I still be able to get x equal to 18 if I do that? And the answer is yes. Now, in that particular example, instead of cats is to dogs, now I wrote dogs is to cat. So that's my new proportion. Notice that I consistently use my proportion in my solution right here. That's why I still got x equal to 18 as my answer. So what I'm trying to say is it doesn't matter which one you pick as your first item in your ratio. As long as you're consistently using the same ratio, you will still get the same answer.